expand. A twin city earth is not withstanding. Third our nation is expand. What does that are, what does that mean and are we prepared for that? And all of the issues that hinge around the way not the graphics of what will look like, what will our economy look like if they all take the appropriate kinds of investment. In other words, will we be less, will we have a lower GDP per capita? Because we've chosen not to invest in education, we will be less going to be a third nation. So the future focus piece is a huge piece. And the final piece is what I call world positioning. Uh, the United States used to be big and bad. What I think that Brother Obama is going to find on Thursday is that not only are we not the biggest and the baddest anymore, but people don't mind telling us that. Chinese have already argued that the dollar should no longer be the currency of the, the reserve currency. They actually asked that some weird currency, it's a, it's a virtual currency called Struggle, I always forget it, but it's, a, it's a, some of the International Monetary Fund put together to have 185 countries, the International Monetary Fund, do exchange within each other. Uh, there are others, uh, the oil producing countries have said the euro should be the reserve currency. And the euro actually is the most heavily traded currency in, in the world. So the whole issue of world position, why does this matter to you? Because it matters in terms of your footprint, how you move, how you how you see how we're perceived in the world. We want to perceive as a thought leader. That's not the case. And it's our fault. Paul Krugman ar argues today that we're more needed than ever, but the Bush years squandered all the moral authority that we have. That basically affects you as young people. Now, though, that's my top ten list, but I'm sure that it may be very different from yours. So what I want to do with the rest of the time that we have, actually, is to ask you all to share with me, you, what, how would you change this list? What's different, what would be different for you? And tell me why. So I'm going to stop here with a request. First of all, it's something bring me a war. Um, and secondly, young lady, I think you had your hand up first. So you got it? I did. I come out of Central California. Okay. But I've uh, been here, I've been here before for five years, and I'm in August. But the biggest thing that I've seen come out of Central California is the, um, how do I say this? The, you were talking about the Hispanics growing in the uh, north across the nation, but oh, I see a lot of it in California. Mm -hmm. And it's um, like access for um, birth control for all people, but a lot of it seems to me access for birth control and um, education for the Hispanic community or any community that needs a lift in education in that area. And also, um, I heard people throughout, tutor, I've also been a tutor, and I've also heard people say, well, I can't afford education. There's, there's a number of people out there who have never heard of rents and let alone loans and all that free money that's out there for any, and they think they can't go to school. You know, our high schools that, <coughs> the high schools that serve students of color, uh, especially in inner cities and in poor communities, are systematically doing young people services. Sometimes they can't. Uh, for example, I, I had a student, a young lady actually, who was going into the military. This was before I was President Bennett, but I met this young woman. I thought she was terrific. I said, what are you going to do with yourself? She said, I'm going into the military. I said, what? I'm like, hmm. And she said, well, my mom says I have to do something. Well, to make a very long story short, I, I miracle it was it was August. And school was starting in two weeks, and in two weeks I was able to get her admitted to get a couch. And um, that was probably the omen that I was going to end up going to the president. But I got into it with her guidance counselor, because her guidance counselor just was dragging her feet on getting the transcript, getting everything. And the woman finally said to me, look, I have 900 students. So that's my case was 900 students. She said, I know you think that I'm, um, you know, not being cooperative. She said, but 900 students I have to pay attention to. So how do you have 900 students assigned to one guidance counselor? Even if this woman in meant well, which there's a question, even if she meant well, she, she was being pulled in, in every direction. It would have taken her, I it meant she probably could have seen each senior once in the course of the academic year. So um, those budgets that are cut, the cuts hit hard. You know, some of these schools are not teaching civics, um, are not uh, teach, they don't have sports. And one might think, well, with sports, what's the deal? We have no obesity issue in the African American community. That's a big deal. And if people don't learn how to become physically active, as young people, they're not going to do it throughout throughout their lifetimes. Um, so I hear what you're saying, and I, I think that we, when we look at K-12 education, we look at who gets certain, what kind of resources are there. When we look at K-12 education, though, also we look at the way we finance it. We finance it wrong. We finance the property taxes in areas that are poor. If you have inner cities, it's a poor area, so the property taxes aren't going to be that much. Um, we should look at financing them through either state or, frankly, federal property. Someone's helped me with 
the most of the issues for me is the question of access um, and the perception of access, I guess, because while there are more people of color who are reaching those upper echelons of leadership and of um, society, it's given the perception that we're making a lot more progress than we actually are because there's more disconnect between those who are making it and those who are left back within the cultural community. And so uh, it's a two-pronged issue. One is that there's I'm just there's going to be less resources allocated in the future because it seems like we've all kind of leveled the playing field. And second is that uh, those who are, like, for instance, the black community who are making it are more disconnected from those who need help within the community. So, whereas in the past, those who made it, it was a community effort, so those who made it get now it's like that individual is missing over each cultural community. And so it's leaving those who are not, who do not have the access even with off. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's going to be um, a large issue in the future, especially since we like a black president. And so to many, that's like the the pinnacle of success when he's just one person and there's millions of people who are not the president. They don't have any money. Or exactly. Yeah, I'll talk tonight a little bit about this, the theory of cultural design. There is no. There is, but, but a lot of people believe there is. I'm so, I, I talked about that this evening. Oh. Yeah, and I think that, you know what you're talking about is really the intersection between race and class, so that you ba you know you basically still have major issues around that. Anyone else? Yes. Yeah. Um, you said your first issue was a uh, case of change, the rate of change, right? I said that was kind of like the umbrella. The first issue was um, okay. Yeah. Uh, either, either way, um, I, I feel that education should be all issues that pertain to education should almost surpass that uh, in that we. It might even fix this educational crisis that we can actually help fix the economy. And uh, I believe our politicians are maybe saying we need to educate the young people and that we need to go forward and actually like, educate the young people. But when it comes down to it, like put your money where your mouth is, I mean, we just had to be buddy cut. And what was the worst? First thing that like, went was basically education. So I, I, I'm just like, I'm very confused with a whole bunch of, uh, I mean, you spend a lot of time with uh, higher powers than I do, but I mean, uh, I'm not really sure. If I should really want to say, like, we educate the other people and give them answers like that, but the second is like a economic crisis, like, all education. You know what I mean? So, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just kind of confused. Um, I think maybe you can explain to me, like, what, what the thought process is with that. Well, I think it's very astute, you know, that people do not put their money where they are. It's the only, um, I, I think I suggest a couple of things that the Obama administration has done. You have to put money up by $619, but come on. I mean, that really isn't enough. Uh, one guy is uh, politics very interesting. Um, and the pork that exists in the line of that you see, um, the rich over in Alaska is uh, not one pick on where Sarah Palin, she's had months of people picking on her. But, um, but that kind of thing is exactly uh, gets funded before education does. At the state level, here's what happens at the state. I, I was reading the paper, local paper the other day and saw the cuts that are going to take place here. So, um, state governments generally by chart, not businesses that federal governments get. So because they can't run, that's it. Here's what a governor is faced with, and it's something that you have to synthesize with. They can cut rent, or they can cut K-12, or they can cut services, or they can cut health care. They can cut something. So many of them try to be fair and say, let's try to do it across the board. Across the board, they're fair. The people who have the most power have been amassing dollars and resources and budgets rapidly the most who have less power. So say everybody with 10 percent cut, you know, the person who 10 percent on mission has a very impact. On you, if it's raised, and you know, ten percent on someone, you know, that of us. So it's interesting. You've got to get inside a governor's head, and the kind of cuts you see basically come from the fact that states don't get to run deficit. I'm more concerned and more disturbed with the fact that failure to fund higher education at the pace that that should be, as well as the failure to more fully involve in the city K through twelve education. And when you look at this budget, the seven hundred ninety-seven billion stimulus package, uh, it seems to me that bigger slices are to, to education. But what I would say to you as a person, as a student, is where is the student lobby? Where's the student advocacy? Where are you? Are you all writing your members of Congress? Are you pressuring around these issues? Are you because you all are voters? I mean, you, you vote 68 percent. You vote for Obama. How do we say very I get that? I mean, there ought to be organized students who are saying, "You want, you know, our turn. This, this, this is the rhetoric of the campaign. You know, and where is there a casualty here? So I, you know, you won't even get fed in your mother's house." Unless you put a plate at the table. You know, you have to ask for what you want. And what I see other people is that after some victory, that's many of you. Um, young people at the Democrat convention. I was the convention, I wasn't. <laughs> but anyway, but I, I saw young people in the early 20s, uh, 
Just do it. Are they organized? Who, 